Tristan, have you confirmed that the uh, attendees cannot hear the, the the people talking before we launch? Like while we're sitting here talking before it starts? Okay, he's having technical difficulties. All right, you're you ready, Iman? Um, yes. Here we go. Well, at least I think we're gonna go. Let's see. Uh, Okay, I lost it. Let's change my new keyboard mode. Show my screen. How do I start this thing? I think it started, Tom. So should I show my screen? Okay. Yeah, just a second here. Um, let's leave it here for now. All right, everybody, welcome uh, to the Wednesday first web Wednesday webinar of uh, 2015. Uh, my name is Tom Vascali. I'm the chair of the IGDA, and I'm also uh, the uh, the, the Wrangler for the Business and Legal Wednesday webinar that occurs on the first Wednesday of each month. Uh, and uh, as you can see from the schedule, it's been rotating. Oops. Uh, hopefully this is working. Uh, and I'm sure somebody will jump in and tell me if it isn't. So uh, uh, anyway, let's let's get this moving. Uh, the schedules uh, for the webinars are posted on the IGDA website, and you can find out what's going on uh, in the various webinars that we have on uh, uh, game design, uh, programming, artificial intelligence, and leadership and production. We rotate through these every month uh, with different hosts. So today um, we're having what I think is, is going to be a very interesting presentation uh, by. Uh, Eamon Deschart on uh, value add, the European EU value added tax and how it impacts game sales uh, on uh, mobile applications, but I think this will probably apply across uh, all different types of applications. And so uh, without any further introduction, let me see if I can get this over to her. Um, if your PowerPoint's up and you're sharing your screen, this should go rather smoothly. So I think it's okay. It is now. Okay. So um, I'm Iman, and I'm going to talk today about VAT and focusing on the um, treatment of mobile application. Uh, there was lots of articles in the news because of a big changes in Europe as of 1st of January 2015. So I will come back on these changes and what are the impact before spe speaking more specifically about the VAT treatment for mobile applications. So I thought that because I didn't know what is the degree of knowledge of the audience about VAT, but I will start with some very basics uh, as an introduction and saying what is a value-added tax. So value-added tax is a kind of consumption tax, and if you know what is a sales tax, it's basically the same thing, except that you have it at each stage, each stages of a production. So for the supplier, it's neutral because he has to collect and deduct the VAT, but, and it's finally supported by the final customer only. The European has did it because it's much easier to manage for them, so the cost of the compliance for the government is lower because it's in the charge of the uh, suppliers, and also it avoids tax evasion. So on the next slide, there is a short example on how it works. So if a manufacturer, for example, spends $1 and uh, 
and then he sell it for to the retailer for one point twenty dollars and he will make a gross profit of zero twenty. And if then the final customer pay one point fifty, the gross profit will be zero point thirty. So in an ideal world with only a ten percent PAT, so the cost of the raw material will be one point twenty, we've paid 0.10 to the government, but um, and when it is sell, uh, there is the VAT only on the gross ma margin, which is 0.02. So it's 10 percent of its margin, 0.20. And for the retailer, it will be the same. So we have the we have to add the VAT on top of the amount sold. And after the VAT is paid to the government, we have the VAT only on the gross margin. And the, after VAT paid, you will notice that the margin is the same. So, in any case, the amount to paid as a tax to go the government is only the, uh, on the margin. So that's why it's neutral for the customer. So. To conclude on this, before going into the core of the subject, VAT is like a sales tax in that ultimately only the end customer is taxed and the difference on the, compared to the sales tax is just how it's collected, collected and remitted to the government. So let's go to the core of the subject that are the VAT treatment on electronic services. So it's on this that there was a big change in Europe as of 1st January 2015. I'm going to cover two different scenarios. The first one is with a supplier located in Europe and the second one is with a supplier located outside European Union. So let's start with a supplier located of outside European Union but before this, what is an electronic services? So an electronic service, it's a quite vague definition. It is a service supplied by internet or through an electronic network and that is dependent on information technology. So for example, it's going to include video on demand, download applications or apps, so games, music download, ebooks or antivirus software. So what is the treatment for a non-EU supplier? So the treatment for a non-EU supplier has not changed. So before and after 1st January 2015, it's exactly the same treatment. Electronic services rendered to EU private individuals by non-EU companies are subject to VAT based on the location of the customers. So what does it mean? It means that the suppliers need to account for that in the country where the customer is located and it needs to manage different VAT rates in 28 different European member states. So US company with no debt in Europe will have to pay French VAT for its income coming from French consumer and British VAT for the consumer in the UK. And the first, the first thing that it will have to do is to determine where its consumer is located. So, to do this, how to manage the VAT in 28 different uh, countries? So, the first way will be to register for VAT in each European country and file your returns there. As you can guess, it's going to be very complex and maybe very costly because you have to manage someone, I guess, to do this in each different country. So Europe has put in place another system called the mini one-stop shop. So it's a kind of simplification system because they realize that a company cannot register itself in 28 different countries. And so you have to register only in one European country and account for your VAT on your services that you provide only from this country. And this country will dispatch the VAT that you owe to the other EU country. And in this scenario, you have only a quarterly electronic VAT declaration to provide 
with all the VAT due in each EU country. But you still, in your systems, need to be able to determine the VAT due in each country, and so to define where is located your consumers. How it works for a European supplier? So, as of 1st January 2015, it's exactly the same as a non-EU suppliers. So, electronic services are subject to VAT in the country where the customer is. So, you need to determine where it is, for example, with the IP address, with the bank account uh, locations. So, this kind of information and what says EU law is that you need to have at least two pieces of indications that are coherent to be able to consider the uh, location. So, for example, the IP address and the location of the bank account or the bank card. But what is very interesting is how it worked before 1st of January 2015. So, electronic services rendered to EU private individuals by EU companies were subject to their VAT on the location of the supplier. So, for example, I'm located in the UK. If I'm selling something, uh, my application from the UK to another European customer, I have to charge UK VAT. So, it was quite good and I will not have to manage different VAT rates. And I may even not have to register for VAT if I was below the UK thresholds for VAT registrations. And also, it's for these reasons that lots of American businesses have set up a permanent establishment in Luxembourg, because doing this, they were able to charge Luxembourg VAT, which, were, which is the lowest rate in EU. So, for example, Amazon, located in Luxembourg, was charging Luxembourg VAT to, to its, its French and British customers when they are, are buying, for example, an electronic book. Before coming on the VAT treatment of electronic services sold through a platform with a specific focus on mobile application, I want to come back on what I said. I really only covered the case where the customer is not a business because if it's a business, the treatment will not be the same. So it's when it's a private individual. But it's what is the case generally when we purchase games. Uh, in case of businesses, the treatment will be quite different. So, if I go back to the non-EU supplier, if he's selling to a European businesses, in this case, he will not have to charge VAT. He will not have to deal with the VAT because the European businesses will deal with the VAT itself. And to determine if you are dealing with a private individual or a business, the most important thing is to ask for the VAT number of the business. In case of electronic services for EU suppliers that sells to a business, uh, we have to distinguish in this case if the business is located in the same country where we will have to charge VAT or in another European country. In this case, it is the same. We will charge without VAT and the business purchasing the application, for example, will deal with the VAT. So, now I'm going to cover uh, the VAT treatment of electronic services sold through a platform with a specific focus on mobile applications and iTunes and Google Play. I'm speaking only on iTunes and Google Play because I'm selling through these platforms and it's the one I know the best. So, let's start with the sales through iTunes. So, the Apple Developer Contract is very well done. It says that the, develop the developer is responsible for the taxes except in the country listed in appendices. So, when you go to the appendices, it lists all European Union countries and almost all the countries where VAT, GST, is due. And for example, this year, South Africa has added a VAT on the sale of mobile application 
and Apple has updated the list and its pricing matrix to include South Africa. So what does this mean? In practice, Apple manages the indirect tax on the sale of mobile applications. And we are in business with Apple and the transaction between the platform and the developer is considered business to business transaction. So it's I come back to what I have just said. So if you are in a jurisdiction that is not Luxembourg, you don't have to charge VAT on the amount committed by Apple Sale Luxembourg. And if you are in Luxembourg, you will have to charge Luxembourg VAT to Apple Sale. Uh, so this is quite good, but it doesn't solve all of the problems and some remains. For example, as of 1st January, um, now Apple, when they sell to the customer, they will apply the VAT rate of each European country. So this will impact your margin because the amount that Apple will remit you will be lower because before the rate applied was 15%, which was the Luxembourg rate. Now the rate applied will be the one in each European country. And this one can um, be between 17% for Luxembourg, because they have increased their rate, to 27% in Hungary. So uh, you need to expect that your margin are going to be a bit lower. And the funny thing is that I checked this morning if on iTunes uh, they have updated their pricing matrix, but they have not yet updated it. So if you based your estimated income on the pricing matrix published by Apple as of today, it's not updated yet because for the euro sale there is only one rate that is still 15% and it doesn't show that the amount you will get will, will change uh, depending on the country of your customers because Euro is for Luxembourg, is for France, is for Belgium because it's the same money but it's not the same uh, VAT rate. And also it doesn't solve all of the issues you may have uh, with reporting because um, when do you report the amount that you owe for example? when you get the money from Apple or when you realize the sale. And these kind of questions can um, be quite tricky while doing the reporting. So now I go for the sale for Google Play. So the Google Developer Contract is quite different. So it states that the developer is responsible for the taxes except if Google is required to do so by local authorities. So what does it mean? It means that from 1st January, Google will be responsible for the, the VAT in Europe because the new law, um, except, except changing where uh, the, the VAT needs to be paid, have considered that all the platform, the marketplace, will be responsible for the VAT. So now it's quite good uh, for all the sales in European Union. You will not have to deal with the VAT if you are selling for Google Play. But this is not solving all the issues because for the sale outside European Union, you are still in charge of the VAT. So you may have to register if you meet the conditions and remit the tax. So, for example, it's the case in Switzerland, in Norway, in South Africa. And it can be very costly because in Norway, for example, if you are selling for, I think, something around uh, 5,000 euros of apps there, you have to register there. But the cost of the compliance and the registering in Norway will be more than 5,000 euros. So, uh, you will be in deficit. And also, before 1st January 2015, you were in charge of the VAT in Europe. And if you were not located in Europe, you should have registered and remitted the tax in Europe. So I have a few examples that I have taken directly through uh, the support that provides Google. So how does it work in practice? Before 1st January 2015, in EU and for certain non-EU countries. So if you have set VAT rates for the sale of your app, 
the EU assuming the half price in this country is one pound and the VAT is 20 percent. The developer of new after the 730 split and remitting the tax will be 0.78. Why? Because the VAT due is 0.17 and you deduct this from the one pound that of the sales and the Margin taken by Google Play is 30% of the amount net, net of that, so it's 0.83 per 0.7. So the developer receives from Google 0.75, 0.78 plus 0.17, and the developer needs to remit to EU VAT at 0.17. And what happens if you have not set the VAT rate? It's very simple. The split then is on the one point for per 0.7, so you will get more money, 0.70, but you will still, in theory, need to pay the EU VAT, and um, so you will let, at the end of the day, a big margin to Google. And on the invoices received by the customer that is buying the app, the VAT rate will be shown as zero compared to the, in the example, it will have been shown at 20%. So the good news is, as of 1st of January, this issue will not exist because Google will have to deal with the VAT. So now, mainly if you were, have not set up a VAT rate before, your margin and the money you will get from Google will be lower because of this. So the developer of new after the split will be 0.78 if it's sold, for example, in the UK, where the VAT is 20%. And Google will be in charge of remitting the VAT at 0.17. I want to come back to this example because this situation still exists. VAT is not limited to the European Union. There is VAT in other countries, and you still need and have to pay your VAT there. So uh, this still makes sense to go and set up a range and check if you are uh, supposed to pay VAT there. So I come to my conclusion. So what I love with these changes as of 1st January 2015, is that now we will not be in charge of dealing with the VAT in Europe because the marketplace or the platform will deal for us. And I think it's quite fair because it's almost impossible to deal with the VAT in every country. And mainly because it's too costly. But the issue is the VAT is not limited to the European market. Other countries have VAT on digital services, as I have said before, Switzerland, Norway, South Africa. But more countries also are considering introducing a value-added tax on digital services. It's the case of Korea, of Japan. And it's quite fair because a company doing an app, a mobile application or selling electronic services located in Korea will have to charge Korean VAT. Compare, compare to another company is not located, uh, located outside Korea, will not have to charge any VAT. So um, also it's to be fair on the market between the local supplier and the supplier outside the country. Uh, so when these changes in 2015, it's not only a good news because there is still for the sellers of online games that are not selling through a platform or a portal, they will have to face a huge administrative burden and then reduce profit. But this is the case for also outside EU. And I would say as of today, I haven't found a proper solution in my mind to think how to deal with this issue because it's very easy to create an electronic services and then at least it was my case when I did my app. I wanted to sell it everywhere in the world. I don't want I didn't want it to um, limit the sale of my app 
to other countries. So what, at the end of the day, I did, I just put it for free because I knew that I will have never the resources to be able to manage VAT on a very large scale. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions, that's it. Tom, I'm not sure if you're speaking, but I don't hear you. I hear you typing. Uh, hi. Uh, I didn't want to hear you. I didn't want you to hear me typing. You know, we have a small group here, so I'm just going to unmute people. And uh, if they have any questions, they can just uh, ask them. Let's see. Unmute all. Unmute all. Unmute uh, uh, Let's see. Unmute all. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll have to do these one at a time. Um, uh, what sort of, I, I don't want to sound like a, like a bad person here, but what if you what if a U.S. company doesn't pay the the, the VAT? What 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 enforcement procedures are in place for say, uh, you know, for Turkey to come after a U.S. company for not paying paying their VAT? And you can't type while you're doing this. Whoever, if, if you're typing, please self mute. Thanks, guys. Did you understand the question? Now I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think you may have muted your microphone. Okay. There we go. Is it okay now? Do you hear me? Yep, gotcha. Okay. So uh, I don't know all the exact rules to uh, be able to enforce the payment of a VAT. But then I guess if there is no presence in the UK, it will be harder. But I'm sure that it's possible to enforce it through um, the double tax treaties, for example. Mm -hmm. And also, you need to take into account that this it will be more for the uh, big corporation uh, than the smallest one. There is an image uh, behind it because you can just be put your name in the press. Um, so there is also the question of your image, but and the enforcement way will also differ from one country to another one. I can't speak uh, very precisely about the exact process because I don't know it on top of my mind. But um, I'm sure that there is agreement to enforce the payment of the tax between the countries. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Wrigley just uh, said he thought it would be helpful to mention that uh, uh, for U.S. Uh, EU, in the EU, all prices are shown as VAT included. Um, and I guess uh, so U.S. businesses should do likewise if they're actually complying with the requirements, correct? Uh, I'm not sure to understand the question. Can you repeat, please? Yes. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the, the necessity of of actually um, stating in the in in the process that the VAT is included in the price? Yes. So when you are selling for Apple, Apple includes the VAT. So uh, nothing is is to be done. It's inclusive in the price. So when I buy an app for my iPad, the question is fine. So um, Apple is dealing with it. The biggest question is when I buy a um, nap on my Android phone. This, you will receive an invoice uh, from Google Play saying you have purchased a app from this seller, for example, um, Pretty Simple or, I don't know, King.com if, if I'm playing on Candy Crush. And on the invoice, the VAT will be shown. There is two options. The seller has put set up a VAT rate in its uh, Google Wallet um, information, then in this case the VAT rate that the seller has set will be shown. And another option is the seller has not set up his VAT rate on his Google Wallet and then the VAT shown will be 0%. But the invoice that you will receive by Google Play we clearly state the name of the seller, that is king.com, and how to contact them if we have any queries. I want also to write that this has changed as, far as of 1st of January, 
because now as Google is in charge of the VAT, the VAT rights in Europe are set up automatically, so they are dealing with it. The questions remain for countries outside EU where you have to set up your rate. But for example, if you are selling in Norway, you are selling not a lot of applications, so below their VAT registration threshold, it's around 5,000 euros. Uh, in this case, you have to set up no VAT rate because you are below the threshold, it's zero percent. You can put zero percent. But as long as you have, you went above the threshold, you need to think about it and you need to insert in your Google Wallet a VAT rate. It's quite easy to do. It just on your when you set up your profile on Google Wallet, there is taxes and you can add the VAT rates. So then, as I understand it, then Google would um, uh, deduct from your revenue, or I, I guess I'm still confused. Uh, so you're selling in everywhere from Luxembourg to Turkey. That's the those are the two ranges of the the lowest and the highest VAT, correct? Hungary, not Turkey. Oh, Hungary. Okay. Hungary, yeah. sorry. I knew it was over there on that side of Europe. Uh, anyway, so uh, it, it, how how would how would that show up in your wallet? And then whose obligation is it to pay it? Are they when you when you set it up that way? Basically, they are um, allocating the funds into these accounts, but it's still the developer's responsibility to pay them. Is that correct? In the EU, not since 1st January, it's not the developer responsibility anymore. It's now Google since the 1st of January. So this is the good news. It was the case before 1st January. But there is outside the European Union, because why I'm mentioning Norway and not another country, it's because Norway is not inside the European Union, so you are still in charge to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want, I can show you my Google Wallet to just show how it works uh, in practice. Sure, let me, uh, let me give you back the... Uh, let me find it first. I just okay. need to connect myself. So I'm ready if you can make me presenter. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, so I'm sorry it's in French because uh, everything yeah, I have everything is set up in French. But if you go into the Wallet Merchant Center, tax demand is sales tax in practice, and they have uh, four parts. Canada, European Union, US, and other countries. So if you go to European Union, there is no VAT rate to set, so this has changed in 1st January, and it's exactly what is said here. Google will collect the VAT taxes from EU cons consumers on behalf of the merchant. The merchant can still manage tax rates for non-EU countries. And so if we go to other countries, need to close this. Over countries, so for example, here is South Africa, you can add a rate here. The same for Norway. Uh, if we go here, we can set up a VAT rate here. And then it will show directly on the invoice to the customers. Uh, if we go back to my presentation, we will be in this case. So, in this scenario, if we set up a VAT rate, then the margin taken by Google, the 30%, will be after the payment of the VAT, so that's why it will be calculated only on 0.83. But if we didn't set up a VAT rate, 
the margin would be taken out of the one, so the full price of the um, sale. And then, because we will receive in this case only 0 0.70 from Google, and in this case, because the VAT amount that we have to remit is included, uh, the developer receives more from Google. I don't know if I'm very clear. No, I think that makes sense. Um, what about uh, uh, is does Apple have a, a similar uh, interface, or is that no? Apple is dealing with the VAT rate. So um, let's go to iTunes. I will show you the pricing matrix because in the pricing matrix published by iTunes, the um, So Apple has this pricing matrix, so it's per currency, and they say if you are selling for $1, you are getting 0 0.70 after we have taken our commissions. But if you look at the euro price, between 0 0.89 and 0 0.54, if you do the calculation, you will realize that what you get is not 70% of the price you, you have set for the sale. The difference is because they are remitting the VAT and they are pretty good because they are doing it in almost all countries. But what also does it mean? It means that in Switzerland, in Norway, automatically you will pay the VAT even if in your case you may not have to pay it because you are below the thresholds. But it's a very good way of doing it because dealing with the com compliance in the country will be too expensive and then it will not be worth to sell anything in this country. But why I'm saying this? It's because, for example... No, I, I understand what you're saying. Certainly it's better for Apple. Um, I'm just thinking of all the cases where, where a developer has, you know, does not meet the threshold and, if, and, 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 and whether it would be worthwhile to... I assume that there would be some way to file something to get to recover that money, but it would probably be more trouble. No. No, it will not be possible, I think, at least. Because the way the contract is said is said that the person selling the application is not you. It's not, um, for example, King.com. It's Apple that is selling, and Apple is above the thresholds. Right, you but you're the, you're the supplier. Are you based on, you, is your obligation based on... We're, we're, we're talking, are we talking about Apple's portion of the VAT or the supplier's portion of the VAT? Um, okay. When you ask, I'm going to go back to Google and after explain how it's worked with Apple. With Google, it is considered that you are the seller. So Google sells nothing except is in charge of the payment and it gives you the proceeds. So because you are the seller, if we don't think about European Union, if we keep the example of Norway, if you are above the threshold, you have to register. In the case of Apple, the, it's the same service, but they don't uh, do it the same way. You are not the seller on Apple. Apple, it iTunes I say ahead, is the seller of your app in Norway. And you, uh, for tax purposes, you are selling it uh, to Apple. So that's why Apple, because of the volume of their sales, are above the thresholds, and they will have to charge Norwegian VAT. Uh, but in your case, you are in a business-to-business -business transaction. You are not in a transaction with a private individual. And in the case of a business-to-business -business transaction, if you are located in the U.S., because in this case you are dealing with Apple Star Luxembourg, Apple, you can charge to Apple with no VAT, and then the question of value added tax will not ask. I hope I'm clearer now. It's a little clearer. <laughs> At least I think I understand. So because it's a business-to-business -business sale, yes. if it, within the supply chain, uh, then there's no VAT due from the supplier. 
In this specific case, yes, because Apple is located in Luxembourg and you are located in the U.S. Okay, but that's specifically because they're in Luxembourg. If they were, if you were doing this through a, a say, digital PC sales through a company in somewhere else in Europe, you could have a very different scenario. No, for, as long as it's a company located in Europe, it would be fine. It would be the same. It's not okay. specific to Luxembourg. They have just set up their companies there because at the time they have set up their company in Luxembourg, the VAT rate was lower. So you you were getting better proceeds because they were paying less VAT. Is the same thing? Does the same model apply uh, to sales in uh, Korea or other countries outside of the EU that have uh, VAT? So it's something that is in discussion in lots of countries. So it's the case in Norway, in Switzerland, in South Africa. Korea, they are discussing it to introduce a value-added tax on the sale of mobile application. And I also know that Japan is discussing it. For other countries in the world, I guess it's something that we will think about more and more. But I, don't, I cannot confirm it's, if it's already the case or not. What I know is that the OECD is pushing the government to make these policies because it's also fair with the local supplier that have to charge that. Right. What about uh, Australia? I think there is VAT in Australia that applied on the sales. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. Yeah. And if I, I just know a lot of people. Uh, would use they will use Australia as a as a test market for a, for a, for a, for an app before they put it on the market in the U.S. so they can sort of use it use it as a beta test. Uh, similarly, they do the same thing in Canada. Uh, if you look to the Apple pricing matrix, you see that uh, for the set in Australian dollar, for a set at 1.29, and your proceeds are 0 0.82, so it's yeah. less. Than 70%. So I guess there is a VAT there. Yeah, there's some sort of tax being imposed. This is uh, interesting, but sort of frightening at the same time, just because of the complexity. Uh, I mean, it's great. I, I wonder, do you know how uh, how Valve handles it for PC Steam sales? Can you repeat, please? Yes. Uh, have, do you have any idea of how uh, Valve software handles it for PC for sales through Steam? on the PC market? No, because it's going to apply to software, uh, but I guess they are bigger, so they have the resources to do yeah. it. Because as long as you have the resources to do it, uh, it's doable. And I also guess that their margins are bigger than when you are just buying an in-app in purchase in a game, so mm. it's more manageable. I don't know exactly. I've never been able to discuss with someone to ask them how do you deal with it. So it's my guess. Yeah, yeah. I would suspect, uh, you know, since they're, they've been very cautious in expanding it on a market by market basis. So I suspect that they have, I mean, they have what, 50 million users and 8 million concurrent users. So I'm sure they're figuring out a way to do it. What about South America? Is VAT common in South America? There is VAT in South America, for sure. Uh, I don't know if VAT applies on this, but for example, what I know is for the taxes in Bra Brazil are just a nightmare, and because it's um, it's like a, in the U.S., it's per um, per state, uh, but I don't know the rules there. I just know that if it was me. Uh, yes, that it's a nightmare. I don't want to deal with Brazil. Oh, Martin Wrigley left, but he said thank you, by the way. Um, I'm trying to monitor the question. All right, well, um, let's see, I'm going to grab this back here. And I do appreciate you showing us this, this you know, this stuff from from your from your screen, I think that's really helpful. Well, Ema, Ema, I, I I can't thank you enough. I think this has been very very uh, uh, beneficial. You've you've given us a tremendous amount to think about. It's it's nice to know that at least uh, through the major portals uh, that people sell their games that this is this is something that they have to be concerned about in terms of their 
pricing and, and that they're go there's going to be an economic impact on their sales. Uh, but also it's good to know that the, the procedures necessary to meet these obligations are being covered by the distributors. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody else for coming. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've got our Wednesday webinar schedule up. And keep in mind that these, uh, all of these webinars eventually make it onto our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you miss something or had to leave early or feel that there's, uh, there's some information that you missed, um, you should uh, check it out there. And uh, again, I thank you all for attending. Uh, Eamon, it's been wonderful. Uh, nice, nice meeting you, or at least seeing your face. And uh, thank I you. hope to, hope to see, you, see you in real life sometime. And Thanks, if, everyone. Uh, any feedbacks or questions, just feel free to send them to me. Absolutely. OK, let me see how I turn this stuff off. Let's see.